the Columbia Workshop presents number 14 of 26 by Corwin. Samson, a new verse play by Norman Corwin, starring Mady Christians and Martin Gable, with an original musical score composed and conducted by Bernard Herman. Tonight's drama, the first of the Old Testament trilogy, which will include Esther and Job, is based on chapter 13 of the book of Judges, verses 18 through 30. on the face he wears at night. He smiles like a thumb-sucking babe and turns a half turn in his love crib. Sleep is good news to bone and sinew. Therefore to Samson who is bone and sinew. Therefore he smiles. Sleep, Samson. Sleep, your gift at sleep. Each plodding breath a bellows to the forge. This deep indwelling strength is not a thing of body juices or of blood springs, but of raw hair, lank hair, lank common hair, bewitched by some black god of Israel. Knowing this secret, I am stronger than your cudgel fist. Your wrist of granite. Where is the man in all Philistia can undo such a might and main? A thousand warriors lie broken in the clay at Lehi, dead of crying Samson's metal. He smote them as a mower smites the grain, a very mortal sight. And still he lives among them, quite unconquered. However, what cannot be Conquered can be coaxed. The cobra may be sung to sleep. The leopard fanned and petted. Whatever fury's armor cannot fend, softness will soon enough devour. I will awaken Samson to a riddle. What is it that is lighter than a dust mote to the touch, yet crushing as disaster? The answer, any moment of the day, the feather strokes of time, the soft-faced little seconds do hammer down the mighty and stoop mountains under and trample out the fires of the fiercest stars. This much a woman knows as pathogen. The unsheathed breast is keener than the naked sword. Signal. They have come. The Lords are here. Less signaling, or you are piping your own funeral. Is he asleep, Delilah? Yes. Come quietly. How many are you? Seven. You brought the razor to shave off his head? Yes. The money also? Each of us, eleven hundred silver pieces. Samson wakes and discovers we are all conspirators. Your wives will waken and discover they are widows. Who will shave Samson's head? The lightest finger of you. Of us? Who else, then? I? My bargain was to hound my lover's genius to its lair, but not to beard it. That is up to you, brave lords. Here is the silver. Put it over there. Well, come now. Who will shear my lion so he be your lamb? What? None of you? <laughs> the seven highest laws of the land and all at sea? I will shave, Samson. You? It will make me worthy in the eyes of our great god, Dagon. Delilah! Why, Delilah, where are you? Quick, quick, he's away, away. Be quiet, quick. 
Move. I'll go into him. I am here, Samson. When you hear me hum to him, it will be safe for you to steal into the chamber. Not before. Why did you leave me? I got up to watch the full moon, Wester. Never has a valley been so drugged and scented and serene. Don't leave me in the night, Delilah. While you were gone, I staggered sick and sweating in a festal dream whose shape already fades. I reached my arms out to you as if to save myself from drowning in a sea of octopi and fanged eels. But you were nowhere. There, my poor, beleaguered boy, there, there. A kiss for Samson's brow. Now hold me softly in the arms that terrify the world. Delilah. Never will you be alone again on your love bed. Dear mighty man, someone afraid to stand alone against a thousand enemies. I will watch over you and intercept all shadows and suspicion of unwholesomeness. No terrors stalk the earth so leering and so leprous and invincible with evil as the undredged demons of our dreams. Give over now. Rest now. Fantasy is ruptured. Lie easy in my arms. Here. Pillow your head against my knees. And sleep. My strong heart. Sleep. Beloved. Sleep, my hero. Sleep. The wars are over, aren't they? Yes. Wars are over. Put by as penitents put by their sins. Put by, put by. No more the bleeding bowel and the broken back. The eggshell skull staved in. No, no more. Ah, peace is a nice sentiment. It is. A shield hung up forever on the wall. Yes. And a fat fawn, drowsing in a wolf. Meadow. A wound, sponged clean, and healing under bombs and unguents. Mm. Rest your weary head. There. There. Now go to sleep. Delilah. Samson. Samson. We can't see you. Where are you, Delilah? Oh, that's it. We need a light. Light your candles. I will shield his eyes. I have the razor. I am ready. Then begin. One lock is shaven. Six locks more. Two. Five more. Three. Four. Four. Hold up. He says. Now then, the remainder. Five. Six. He bubbles at the mouth in some deep, sudsy slumber. Just one lock more. And he is shorn for good. Seven. Finished. All but finished. Now it commences. First. Get away, this fury making hair. Done. Now make a wider light. Yeah. Look, he's turning. He is still asleep. Now, are you ready with your ropes? Primed and waiting. 
Stand back. I will awaken him. Samson! The Philistines are on you, Samson. Mm -hmm. What is this? Who are these men, Delilah? The Philistines are on you, Samson! No, no, this is another dream. My head! Loose his hands! And let him feel his scalp! Sean! Sean of my secret and my strength! I sold your strength for silver! No! Let me shake my head till I am sensible again. I still am in sessions of a dream. This is a tableau out of sleep. This cannot be Delilah, but a counterfeit. It can be! And it is. No, no! This is a play of ghastliness, goaded by some dead lover's mold green envy. My senses do this treason. Not Delilah. Oh, my head needs shaking to be clear. Then uh, let the hand of a Philistine hasten to assist you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he is human and responsive, too. For see, he's bleeding where I hit him in the mouth. Now he begins to know the taste of insult. I am awake, then. This is a conscious and malignant thing. Betrayed and trapped and bound with rope enough to tie the sun from rising. Now that you have taken Samson, take him and go. This has been a sleepless night. The first of many for you. May your sleep be rotted to the core forever. Plagued and pursued across the face of night and cancerous with conscience. Keep your curses and reproaches in your cheek. I've done what I have done, and I'm quit of it. And none of your vile maledictions can corrupt me. Alas, you're right. Corruption cannot be corrupted any more than truth can be made still truer, or perfection be perfected. How can a soul decayed as yours rot further? Hold on! For words are all the strength you have left to you now. Samson, you, whom I have hated while I loved, brood over this. You have been vanquished not by soldiers milling in a bloody mud, but by a woman, quietly, alert, unarmed, companionless, inspired not by fearsome shouts of battle, but by silver! Silver, yes, properly. Tribute paid the conqueror for conquering. Death is a greater conqueror than even you, Delilah. Also quiet and alert, unarmed and unaccompanied. What tribute shall you pay the grave? When angry justice overtakes you, with what coin bribe the worm? With flesh. It can be minted and it can be forged into a hot and supple metal. My body is the sword that cut you down. Mm. And a two-faced sword it is, drawn from a scabbard of the foulest treachery and thrust into the vitals of a trusting sleeper for a sack of silver. Oh, Felicia! You are my people's enemy and you are mine. And you are captured like a common thief. By a common lying hypocrite. The vanquished would do better not to sneer at the victorious. Yes, truthful Delilah is our greatest army. We should drink to us. A toast to victory! Yes. To victory! Yes. Yes. Sorry and degenerate victory. Oh, crass, craven Philistia. All war debauched and honor shamed away. Fly skirts for banners. Lisp your commands. Ride beds to battle. Flank with a thigh. Better than bungling among broken backs and shattered skulls. Listen, the eight of you. I am the sex which fathers so deplore at birth and glumly suffer to be reared. A girl is born, they say. Alas, the pity, luck, and Dagon have deserted you. A girl is born, fit only to attend the wants of masters and to sate their several hungers. We are the weak ones, the veiled ones. We are the women, the opinionless, consulted only by our lovers and our suckling babes. Here is example of our uselessness. This brutish Israelite who in a single brawl at Ashkelon killed 30 men, who out of fury when he was denied a wife, burnt down the cornfields and the vineyards in the time of harvest. This terrifying Samson who one rowdy midnight wrecked the city gate of Gaza, carried it away upon his shoulders, who at Lehi slew a thousand of our fighting men armed only with the jawbone of an ass. This 
same appalling Samson lies disfranchised here by one such weak and useless and opinionless. A girl child, much deplored at first. Consider it, my lords and masters. You, whom I hate together as I hate all men. Consider it, my fallen lover. In the meantime, go. Go, take him, take yourselves. Remove from here. This incident is ended. We are ready to proceed. Samson, now we shall do to you as you have done to us. Impossible. You cannot slay a thousand of me. No, but one can die a thousand of them. Are you prepared then, Samson? For anything but justice. Ah, shall the strong man squeal when we begin? Shall Samson cry for mercy? You shall not have the pleasure. Nor the pain! <laughs> I am far less a spectacle than you. A hundred smirking lords set round about a chained and bonded man to do him torture. These are the faces I've seen on bratty boys when picking off the wings of injured flies. Quiet, murderer, lest we root out your tongue. Root out my tongue, and still my thoughts shall speak. And when we hack your hands off, will you raise your stumps against them? Yeah! Ah, but little men, to vaunt advantage and to sport in the discomfiture of the defeated, the lowest of low lusts is torment, for it lies beneath the bottom instinct of the savage animals. Wolves are more dignified. Snakes, by comparison, walk lofty. Yea, the crawling crab has wings. Not even the despised jackal would go for a side of skill. But do proceed, Philistine. There is merriment for such as you and such as me. Behold, my lords and lieges, here is lore of animals and of their instincts, told to us by kind old Samson. Ah, we are but schooling at his feet. Observe and listen. You will learn the tactics of the bees. Our ants are provident. How bears deploy the winter. How the supine chrysalis grows wings. <laughs> Here is the second lesson, Samson. The great and powerful among the animals are short of sight. The whale who thrashes up a storm with but a flicker of his tail is squint-eyed. And the elephant whose legs are pillars left behind from the construction of the earth sees blurs beyond two lengths of its own self. Thus... To adjust sweet nature to its proper scale, your sight should be subtracted, since you are indeed a mighty animal. Or were one. <laughs> <laughs> Less vision, therefore, for a holder of outspoken views. This fear among us, this our honored guest, he will now subdivide his eyes. What? Leave him one eye? Indeed not. That would fracture all our delicate arithmetic. Two eyes are only twice one eye, but one eye is a billion more than none. Uh, <laughs> I have it. We shall multiply. Is this a riddle now? Samson is fond of riddles. We shall multiply and not divide. Two eyes times aught. The sum is nothing. Nothing it shall be. Samson, have you ever seen a cipher close at hand? <laughs> Appeared into the depths of nothingness? Yes, I'm looking now into the endless vacancies of souls, each yawning like the ultimate abyss of hell. Remarkable, the penetration of his eyes. Hand me the red hot iron. We will execute these scouts at once. Here is the brand. See how it glows, Samson? With this dull light, we shall extinguish light. Let's see you stare it down! I am prepared. Come with your blazing iron. What will you do for eyes tomorrow, Samson? Have you thought of that? The God of Israel shall be my eyes. <laughs> Ready now? Hold him, lest he squirm inside his chain. We are holding him. <laughs> How do things look now, Samson? Esther. A new biblical opera by Lynn Murray and Norman Corwin, presented as number 15 in the Columbia Workshop cycle, 
26 by Corwin, and featuring Martin Gable, Arnold Moss, Everett Sloan, Joan Vitez, and Winston O'Keefe. Now it came to pass, in the days of Ahasuerus, from India even unto Ethiopia, over an hundred and twenty and seven provinces. I do hereby proclaim this year of my reign the biggest feast ever seen in the East. Months we'll make merry and let workers stay alone and sing and dance and celebrate the glory of the throne. And there was a big feast in Shushan. When the heart of the king was merry with wine, and he was in his cups and he was feeling fine, four sheets to the wind and under the weather, he called his seven chamberlains together. Now, gentlemen, where's her imperial majesty? Queen Vashti. Vashti is giving a party in the royal house. For women only. Oh, yes. Well, bring her here to me. Yes, right away, your majesty. Yes, right away, your majesty. Yes, right away, your majesty. Now, Vashti, she was spirited and highly independent. Of purple-blooded Persians, a proud descendant. Her bearing it was regal and her attitude was bold. And when the chamberlains arrived, her compliments were cold. What do you want? His Imperial Majesty requests the presence of her Imperial Majesty at the feast in the garden of the court of the palace. Oh, he the... does, does he? Tell him I'm busy with my own guests. But, madam... And I mean no further. I refuse to go with you. But, Your Highness... Did you hear me? Yes, yes, yes Your Imperial Majesty. Majesty. Very well. Now get out. Name you can. Yes, Your Majesty. You are reputed to be the sagest of the seven princes of Persia? Yes, Your Majesty. That is why I sent for you. I need your advice. Yes, Your Majesty. You are a very wise fellow, Memucan. If you can't advise me, who can? Nobody. The queen has disobeyed an imperial command. She has broken with tradition. She has gotten out of hand. So how am I to act now? What conclusions do you draw? What can we do unto the queen according to the law? Sire, in my opinion, Vashti the queen has wronged not only the king, but also the princes and all the people in the provinces. For this deed of the queen will be noised among the wives And they'll despise their husbands all the rest of their lives Likewise will all the ladies scorn the princes of the sire I fear the low example will arouse contempt and ire What to do about it? Let a law be written by which Vashti might be smitten By the loss of her royal estate then choose another queen who is not so mean. That's a fine thing to do that Scribe, take a decree. Yes, Your Majesty. I, Ahasuerus, decree that Queen Vashti shall be deprived of her royal estate for just and good causes, and that every man in my kingdom shall bear rule in his own house. So the queen was divorced, and Ahasuerus was alone in the palace, and he was very lonely. What matters, pomp? What matters, glory? What matters, riches?
matters, my kingdom? What matters, my throne? So long as I'm alone. Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, Sire, we have a suggestion. What is it? Let the king appoint officers in all the provinces that they may gather together fair young maidens into Shushan the palace. And let the maiden which pleases the king be queen instead of Vashtar. Let it be done. What matters, Tom? What matters, glory? Now in Shushan there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai. And he brought up Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. And the maid was fair and beautiful. So it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the palace, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house. And Esther showed not her people or her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. So Esther went into the royal house of Ahasuerus. What is your name? My name is Esther. It is a pretty name. Thank you, Your Majesty. And very becoming. Sit beside me, Esther. You're very beautiful. Of what family are you? A common family. My father was ever here. And of what people are you? An ancient people. How ancient? Ancient as Persia. Esther, do you think you could love the emperor of 127 provinces, king of the Persians, king of the Medes? Yes. <laughs> But what do you know about love, little Esther?
king loved Esther above all, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then came Haman. Haman was a wicked man. But all the servants in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king had promoted him above all the princes. Only Mordecai bowed not. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, he was full of wrath. Who is that dog of a dog who will not bow down to me? That, Your Excellency, is Mordecai, the Jew. All others bow to me. He alone remains standing in the gate. I'll see about that. You, Mordecai, down on your knees. Well, down, Jew. Haman has spoken. I bow only to God. Down, you fool. You've had my answer. You'll die for this cursed old man. Why do you refuse to bow, you swine? Yes. Speak up, Greybeard. Answer the Grand Vizier. I will not bow down to a man on a horse. I will not bow down to a crown. I will never yield to a tyrant's force, though I burn or hang or drown. I will never worship a grand vizier or his son or his nephews or nieces. There's only one ruler who I fear, though I be chopped in a thousand pieces. I will not kiss the earth that you have brought, though I be whipped all day for it. I will bow down only to the living God, so can't be the price I pay for it. Shall I arrest this man, Your Excellency? No, don't contaminate yourself. I have a better plan in mind for dealing with Mordecai and his kind. Come along, Captain. Scribe, come here. Yes, Your Excellency. Set this down. To the kings, lieutenants, and to the governors and the rulers of every people of every province, and order as follows. To destroy, to kill, to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day. The day of the twelfth month, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Very well. Inscribe this order immediately and return to me here. Thus shall I avenge the insult of Mordecai. He and his people shall perish as one. The best way to bolster authority is to bully a qualified authority. I shall play with the sword of those I hate. They'll grovel in the dust before Haman and Fred. On the scattered and the few will my wrath be heard. Then I'll seize the crown and conquer the world. I'll begin by making a scapegoat race and cut my throat. Make in my face. Oh, the best way to bolster authority is to bully a small minority. I'll rule with iron every Persian and me. I'll make them sweat and I'll make them bleed. With gross and poisonous lies, I'll feed him and hold in my grip all life and freedom. I'll begin by making a scapegoat race and kill them off without a trace. Oh, the best way to bolster a party is to bully a small by
quiet. Listen. What are you doing inside the palace? You'll be killed if you're found here. That's why I must speak quickly. Did you get my message about Haman's decree to massacre the Jews? What's to be done? Esther, you must go into the king and make supplication to him in behalf of your people. But don't you know the law? Whoever goes into the king without being called shall be put to death. Except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter. But I've not been called to come into the king for the past 30 days. Esther, don't think that you shall escape in the king's house any more than the rest of your people. For if you altogether hold your peace now, then deliverance shall arise from another place. But you and your father's house shall be destroyed. Who knows but what you are come to the kingdom for just such a time as this. Very well. I will go unto the king, which is not according to law. And if I perish, I perish. Where are the proclamations awaiting my seal? Here, Your Majesty. Very well. And while I seal these with the king's ring, go tell Memukan, who stands with Haman, that I would have a word with him. Yes, sire. Your Excellency. Yes? His Majesty the King requests that you consult with him as soon Wait as... Wait a moment. I believe my eyes. Is that Queen Esther standing here in the court? Though not called by the king? Why, this is a grave transgression of the law. Punishable by death unless the king holds forth his scepter. Quiet, the king must be. Queen Esther. May it please the king. Come. Touch the scepter which I hold forth to. My sire. What is your request, Queen Esther? If it please the king to grant my petition... Let the king and Haman come tomorrow to a banquet which I've prepared for them. Is that all? <laughs> let it be done, Queen Esther, and let Haman be so advised. invited nobody to the banquet but myself and the king. Why, this is the greatest honor that has ever been bestowed upon any man in the kingdom. But it avails me nothing so long as I see Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. Mordecai, who will not bow down to me, though the rest of Shushan kiss the dirt under my feet. I believe I shall hang the knave. Hmm. I will build a gallows today, 50 cubits high, here before my own house, so that I may see it. Tomorrow I will petition the king that Mordecai be hanged. Yes, but first to build the gallows. On that night, the king could not sleep. And he commanded to bring the books of the records of the Chronicles. And they were read before the king. In the eighth year of the reign of Ahasuerus, two of the king's chamberlains sought to lay hands upon the king to murder him. But the thing was known to a man named Mordecai who told it to the officers of the king. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out, and therefore the criminals were hanged. And on the eighth day... Just a moment. I don't even remember this thing. What honor has been done Mordecai for making known the plot against me? Nothing was done for him. Nothing? Hmm. Who's in the court right now? Haman, to petition the king concerning the hanging of a citizen of Shushan. Tell him to come in. Yes, your majesty. And unkindness has been done unto Mordecai. His service to the throne should have been acknowledged long before this. But for his vigilance, I might be dead. May it please the king, the grand vizier. Haman, a question. Ah, yes, your majesty. What shall be done to a man whom the king delights to honor? A man whom the king delights to honor. For the man whom the king delights to honor will um, bring the royal apparel which the king wears. 
and the horse which the king rides, and the crown which is set upon his head. Let one of the king's most noble princes array the man with all, and bring him on horseback through the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done. The man whom the king delights to honor. Very good, Haman. Now make haste and take the apparel and the horse, as you have suggested, and do so to Mordecai, who sits at the gate. Don't overlook anything you've suggested. So Haman had to honor Mordecai according to his own device. And after that, he went to the banquet with the king and Esther the queen. <laughs> now, what is the petition you've saved up for this banquet, Queen Esther? If I found favor in your sight, and if I pleased the king... Yes? Then spare my life, and spare my people. Spare your life? Your people? What do you mean, Queen Esther? We are sold, I and my people. Sold? By what enemy of the king would kill the queen? Who is he, and where is he that dares presume in his heart to do so? He is with us. And his name is Haman. He has issued a decree to massacre the Jews who are my people. No, no, it is not I. The and the enemy. It is this very man. Haman, have you perverted the command I entrusted unto you because I believed in the wisdom of your counsel? No, Your Majesty. I, uh, allow me to, to explain. Why do you stammer so? The matter is not what it seems, Your Majesty. I have rung for the Chamberlain Harbona. We will make inquisition whether you lie against the word of the Queen. But, Your Majesty, if it please the King, I... It, it Harbona, not... apprehend this man has conspired to destroy the queen and her people. I am innocent of this. Bear witness for me, Chamberlain. What do you know of this, Harbona? I know only that the Grand Vizier has lately built a gallow 50 cubits high for Mordecai. For oh, Mordecai? Where is this gallows that would prove him up? It stands in the house of Haman. Is that so, Haman? Uh, yes, but you see, it was... Harbona! Let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman to destroy these people. Your Majesty! Let it be granted that these people gather themselves together and stand for their life to destroy those who attack them on the 13th day of the 12th month. Let it be known that they should be ready on that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. Yes, Your Majesty. And as for Haman, take him away. Cover up his face and hang him on the gallows he prepared in his house. No. No, Your Majesty, no. No. <laughs> Haman stood upon the gallows. Haman stood upon the gallows. He built in his own house. Where will you hang for his And they hanged Haman on the gallows. <laughs> Be a lesson to vain men who lust for limitless power. Let this notify profane men that there comes a reckoning hour. Let this point a moral that the only truce with a traitor and tyrant is a gallows noose. A lesson to great men who rule and command and lead. Never trust in men who hate men because of their race or creed. Let this point a moral that the only truth with a bully and a bigot is a gallows noose. And the 
king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. And as to the queen and joined her people to establish among them the month which was turned unto them from morning into a good day, that they should make days of feasting and joy. All these acts, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Medea and Persia? That was Esther, a new opera by Lynn Murray and Norman Corwin, presented as the second in the Old Testament trilogy. The role of Esther was sung by Genevieve Rowe, that of Ahasuerus by Harrison Knox, Mordecai by Eugene Lowenthal, and Haman by Kenneth Schoen. Next week at this same time, Columbia will present Charles Lawton in a little adaptation of the Book of Job as the last of the Old Testament trilogy, for which production Dean Taylor has composed a special score, his first for radio. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. From Hollywood tonight, Columbia is privileged to present the eminent actor Charles Lawton and the music of Deems Taylor in a performance of the biblical Book of Job, adapted and directed by Norman Corwin. Leith Stevens conducts the orchestra. Charles Lawton in Job. <laughs> perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance was also seven thousand sheep, and three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all men of the East. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And when the days of their feasting were gone about, Job sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Thus Job did continually. sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. 
And the Lord said to Satan, Whence comest thou? From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Have you considered, my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and eschews evil. Does Job fear God for naught? Have you not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth your hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your faith. Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only upon himself put not forth your hand. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing! And the ass is feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness. And it sought the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men and they're dead. And I only am escaped alone to kill them. and rent his mantle and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself. And the Lord said to Satan, From whence cometh thou? From going to and fro in the earth, and walking up and down in it. Have you considered, my servant Job, that still he holds fast his integrity, although you moved me against him? To destroy him without cause. Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath he will give for his life. But put forth your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy faith. Behold, he is in your hand, but save his life. went Satan forth, and smote Job with sore boils, from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Now when Job's three friends heard all this, they came, every one from his own place, Eliphaz and Bildad and Zophar. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word to him, for they saw that his grief was very great. After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. Let the day perish wherein I was born, 
And the night in which it was said there is a man-child conceived. Let that day be darkness. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Lo, let that night be solitary. Let no joyful voice come therein. Let them curse it that curse the day who are ready to raise up their morning. Why died I not from the womb? For now should I have lain still and...